Today we're going to make a simple game that shows the power of the Corona SDK. This demonstration was originally made a few years ago by Corona, then Ansk Mobile. Since then there have been a few changes to the SDK, so I thought I would give an update to the entire process. I'm going to try and do this entire demonstration of a simple game in just a few minutes. So to begin with, I've already got my graphics set up. I've created a folder to store everything in. I'm calling that this project is called Balloon Bounce, and so I've created a folder called Balloon Bounce. I'm using the Sublime text editor to create this project. One of the advantages of the newest versions is that we can see the graphics as well as the programming that we put together. So I've got a simple balloon. I've got a beam for the bottom of the screen so that the balloon can't fall off the screen, and then I've got a nice sky background to show the entire environment in. So let's go ahead and get started. I've created a file called main.lua. It's in the same folder as my background clouds, my beam, and my balloon. So let's start by putting a background on the screen. This first command creates a local variable called background. It uses the display.new image rectangle and loads backgroundclouds.png file. All graphics, if you're going to deploy to an Apple device, have to be a PNG file type. So background clouds is set, ready to go. We're going to use two built-in commands of Corona to limit or automatically resize the image rectangle to the size of the device. Display.contentWidth and Display.contentHeight. That'll automatically resize background clouds to the same size as my device. Then we're going to locate background for the X and Y in the center of the device display, which is using display.contentCenterX and display.contentCenterY. If we save and run, we now have a background. Yay! First step done. So let's get some more material on the screen. Next we need to put in the beam, or the floor of the screen. So again I'm using the new image rectangle to load beam underscore long dot png, which is what we showed earlier. I'm setting it the width of the object to be the same width as the display.content width. So display.content width, it'll automatically resize to the width of my display. We're going to make it 50 pixels high. And then we'll set the x and y of the floor variable, which the center of floor will be at display.content center x, and the center of y will be the height of our content minus 25 pixels. So since it's the center, Y is the center of our object, and we know that the object will be fixed 50 pixels in height. We can move it up 25 pixels, and it'll automatically be in the middle. So again, we'll save and show the object. Here we are. It's now at the bottom of the screen. Since this is called balloon bounce, we better put a balloon in there. So we've got a local variable called balloon. We're displaying it as a new image. I'm not resizing it. I'm going with the default size of the balloon object which is currently 202 pixels by 261 pixels, and we are setting it to the center of the display, or the center of the device that it will be deployed to. There we go. We've got a balloon in the middle of our screen. Now, since this is a game, we need some physics in it. I want the balloon to fall as if gravity was pulling on it. If you've ever used the physics or tried to implement box 2D physics in another engine, you can know that that can take a lot of effort and a lot of time to do it. Um, I had one student once tell me they spent three hours and over 200 lines of programming to implement simple box 2D physics. In Corona, all that heavy lifting has been taken care of for you, so we're able to do it with just simply one line of code and start it with a second line of code. So we're going to load physics by requiring it it's actually an outside object that we just simply load into the system. And then we start physics with the start command. So physics.start. Now, right now, running the app won't show any changes because we haven't added any of the physics bodies to the physics engines. They're just simply background graphics at this time. So now let's add the graphics that we did and make them into physics objects. So again, this is a very simple command. Physics.addBody, we're going to add the balloon object, and we're going to give it a bounce. The bounce is 0.3. Bounce is usually a number between 0 and 1. 0 meaning that it has no bounce. 1 meaning that the energy going into the collision, it will have the same amount of energy coming back out of it. If you go more than 1, it actually has more energy coming out of the collision than 
went into it. So at this time point, we've got 0.3, so it'll have it'll return 30% of the energy that went into the bounce. Let's go ahead and add a second object. That's our floor. The floor will be a static object. We have three types of physics bodies. We have static, dynamic, and kinematic. For most projects, you're going to use static or dynamic. By default, dynamic is what's going to be used. Static is used for objects that are not affected by gravity, such as a floor or the ground. So now when we start our program, the balloon will fall. Believe it or not, we're almost finished. So let's add a little bit more. Now we're going to add a function. Functions are repeatable instructions that we give to the Corona engine, or any programming language has functions or methods. In this particular one, we're going to use it that anytime someone taps on the balloon, the balloon will be pushed up. We can do this with the physics tool of apply linear impulse. So we say balloon colon apply linear impulse, and then how much of an impulse do we want to give. The first two numbers are the how much force is applied to the balloon. So the x value goes is for horizontal, so we don't want any force applied horizontally. We do want it to move up, so we're going to give negative 2, which means it'll be pushed up by a factor of, or a push impulse of 2 every time we tap it. And then where do we want this impulse applied? We want it applied to the center of the balloon, its x and y values. So it horizontally, vertically, center of the balloon, or height and width of the balloon. We just have one more line of code to add, and our app will be ready to go. Our final line of code is an event listener. Every time the balloon is tapped, we want it to call the push function. So we add, use an add event listener, listening for tap events on the balloon object. It will call the push function. So let's try our, our little app. As you can see, we can push our balloon up higher and higher, and if we stop tapping, it bounces. Now these values can be adjusted. You can increase the bounce amount. Let's increase that to 1 so you can see what I was talking about earlier. So as much energy will come back out of the bounce as went into it. If you want a greater input pulse or push when they tap on the balloon, you can increase this number as well. So this, let's double that to negative 4. As you can see, with a value of 4, I get a lot more push onto the balloon. And there you have it. We have a simple game completed in just a few minutes.